All right, so we talked about it before, but I feel like there is a couple more things that we could go over when it comes to params. So let's do it now. Let's just grab the example we used it before for the params. Let's just put that in here. Return context send status fiber. Okay, go ram may not go. And I'm actually using now Postman. My computer is handling Postman, so that's a good, that's a good sign. Let's do in here. I get request. Oh yeah, and let's pass in here user john as a name for ram and obviously instead of just getting the context let's actually just return this param send string restart this let's make the request and we get join here same way we would get anything else that we put on the name param so this is pretty much how params work but let's suppose that this would be something like so that's the name and then the id and instead of sending the string let's send status and in here let's say that name is context param name and the id is gonna be a number but context of params is gonna return is gonna return always a string and let's suppose that the id is gonna be maybe an inch then we're gonna have the wrong type in here so what we could do in here is to do something like string conv a toy and pass context params and the id and in here we would have to also validate because string conv a toy is gonna also potentially return an error and then we would have in here the inch that we want but that seems a lot of work right like doing a string convert a toy context operams and we don't really need to do that because fiber gives us something out of the box to handle numbers which is the params inch and it's gonna also return an error because if the parameter is not a number, zero will be returned and an error will also be returned. And obviously, if the params doesn't exist, it's going to be default to zero, which is pretty much the default to int. So let's try this out. Instead of doing this, let's do context params int id. And let's ensure, let's say status fiber, okay? And let's send actually a JSON fiber map name and then id it's gonna be the id and they should work pretty much the same way so let's try this out let's restart the server let's open postman and we want to pass it here an integer let's pass this one and that's not what we want to do because the first param is the name let's say john do and then 34 but that's what we get in here id and name and as i said before this is pretty much shorter way of doing this right here so let's run this again and we should get the same result so apart from prams inch and prams itself there is another way of getting the prams which is using prams parser and this one works very similar to body parser it is essentially the same signature the only thing that's gonna change is the structure tag that's gonna be prams so let's try this out Let's say that we don't want to get the params this way. We want to say that we have a type user params, which is a struct, and we have a name, which is string and params struct tag name. We also have the ID, which is just an ID. And just like with body parser, let's check if there is an error when we parse the params. So params parser binds the param string to a struct. So let's create in here a user struct for the user params. So let's say user, user params, new user params, user params, error. It's not new. Return error. And in here, user params, name, user params, ID. So this code right here should pretty much give us the same thing that this one gave us on Postman. So let's run the server. And in here, as you can see, we have the ID and name, and it should just give the same. So let's try this out. And we are getting something wrong in here. This should be a number, but this is because we set in here the ID to be a string. Let's set this to be 864. Let's try this out, and this one in here should now be a number. And it is. So yeah, it's a more verbose way of getting the params. If you have like a lot of params on your URL, 
then I think it's a good idea to use Brahms parser. But if you only get one or two, I think it's better to just go with this approach because it's shorter. All right, so very similar to params, let's now talk about queries. For example, in here, we have the query name with the value Alex, want pizza, uh, false ID, uh, da, da, da. So let's try this out. Let's, let's grab this one. Let's put that right here. And let's return context status fiber. Okay, let's also return it here. Fiber JSON. So let's say name. It's going to be name. Actually, I don't really like this, <laughs> this example, guys. Let's do something else here. Instead of name, let's say that this is sort. Let's say ascending and one pizza. Let's replace this with, let's say, date. And in here, let's say 2024. Actually, let's just say today for the sake of making it simpler. And the last one, let's say new. True. So that's our new query here. So we have sort, date, and new. Let me just get rid of these comments. Let's call this queries. So we have sort, date, and then we have new. So let's just grab this query on the example and let's try to make a get request to this endpoint and see what we get on the response. So that's a get request. Let me just clear this. And Postman just filled our params, query params in here. So we get sort, ascending, date, today, new, true. So let's see this in action. And we get that in here, date, today, new, true, sort, ascending. But as you can see, they are all strings. That's the default way that these queries work. So for example, let's suppose we had in here a timestamp. I'm just making this up, okay? This is not a uh, real timestamp. And obviously, true in here it's a boolean one way of fixing this is to handle the types of each one so let's say that in here we want the sort so let's use context of query which is by the way this one so we get each query by its key for example context query order and it's going to return the value so let's go back to our example and let's say sort sort is going to be a string definitely so we don't need to do anything date is going to be an int so let's say context query date and we want to turn this one into an integer we can do that using the string conv a toy and then we should handle the error i'm just gonna ignore the error but in a real application you shouldn't so this one is gonna be an int and then we also get the new and in order to parse a boolean value which is the new we want to do something very similar to what we did in here let's actually copy this instead of our toy it's gonna be parsable and new that also is gonna return an error and let's just replace in here so sort date new so let's try this out and we should get in here the correct type for each value and that's it so date is now an integer new is a boolean and sort is still a string which is correct and as you might have noticed the pattern in here we do have in fiber things to handle integers booleans and so on so let's take a look at those to make our code shorter we have query bool which is pretty much what's gonna turn our boolean query value into a boolean type query float which is a pretty good one to handle things like prices and so on so it's a it's gonna convert to a float 64 and obviously defaults to zero same is gonna apply to query int but it's for integers and query parser we're gonna take a look in just a moment let's take a look at the query boolean query float and query int and in order to do that let's actually include a new parameter in here let's say maximum price and let's say 999. 99 and let's change this one so this one date is gonna be an integer so let's say query dot query int which is an integer and this is gonna return just the integer no errors similarly with the boolean new let's say here context query bool new and then maximum price which is gonna be 
query float maximum price. Let's just add in here maximum price and it makes our code much cleaner and with way less weird stuff like ignoring errors or having a bunch of if error and so on in here. So let's see this in action. And let me just copy this again so I get the maximum price and let's make the request. So dating here we get something wrong because uh, date is still a string query int is gonna default that to zero so let's say here a sample timestamp and that should work so we get in here the date integer max price which is a n64 float new boolean sort is a string so we also get the query parser as i was talking about before which is very similar to body parser they are all very similar to body parser when it comes to parsing data on the requests and as you can expect this is pretty much the same signature the only thing that's gonna change is the structure tag which in this case is query so let's replace all of this with using the query parser so let's say type query product struct we have sort which is a string and in its query struct tag it's gonna be sort we have date which is an int and it's gonna be date the struct tag we have new which is a boolean and then we have max price which is an int 64 so if error when parsing the query context query parser and it's gonna bind to the query so let's initialize in here a new query so query product it's gonna be new query product let's pass the query product error is not new let's return error and if we don't have an error let's use the data from the query product so query product sort date new and max price and we should get the same thing that we get when using specific query for its typing here so let's try this out let's not forget to restart the server and we should get in here the same thing so let's try this fade to the code schema error converting value for maximum price so let's see what's wrong int 64 and that's obviously will not work because we are saying that this is an int 64 while this is a float 64 so let's run this again and now it should work and it does so date int max price float 64 new boolean sort string 